Now, some of you watching on BBC World News will already know there has been some unseasonably cold weather across much of central and southern Europe, also in some parts of the Middle East too. Let me show you some of the pictures that have come into the newsroom in the last few hours. First of all, this is Turkey, where over 2,000 roads have been completely blocked by blizzards. These pictures are from uh, Ankara, the capital. Absolutely extraordinary pictures coming in from Greece. These are beaches in Athens that have been completely blanketed in snow. We know three people have died because of the stormy conditions and freezing temperatures. Next, this is uh, Germany. You've got a feel for people stuck in this traffic jam. This is close to Munich. We know there have been train delays and a number of jams in Bavaria as well. And lastly, these are pictures taken of rail workers in Austria. They're trying to rescue a chamois, which is trapped in deep snow. You can just about make out its horns there. And by the way, a chamois is a type of goat that's native to the Alps. That's something I didn't know 24 hours ago. But there it is, breaking free of the snow, and we're told that it's doing just fine now. Well, as you may well know, just behind the outside source screen are all my colleagues from BBC Weather. And a little bit earlier, I stepped behind it to speak to Susan Powell to find out what's happening. Basically, we've got stuck in what's termed as a blocking weather pattern. Right. And what that basically means is things grind to a halt. So we've had high pressure over the UK. Mm -hmm. That's kept us very settled. High pressure further east. That just allows the temperatures to keep falling and falling away across eastern Europe. And then basically we create a roadway between the two, thanks to the jet stream, that just keeps diving these areas of low pressure down into the heart of Europe. So this is the feature that's brought the recent snow mm -hmm. uh, across the Alps. And that's going to cause chaos, I think, across the Balkans on Thursday. And then if we start our clock rolling you can see the tail end of that system mm -hmm. still keeps some snow across the Alps this is our problem though these lows continue to roll over continue to butt up to the cold air looks like we'll take a little bit of a breather in proceedings maybe early part of the weekend mm -hmm. but we're keeping a close eye on these features here tipping in Saturday Sunday and the isobars coming together as well strong winds it's blowing the snow mm -hmm. around it's causing problems with ice pack it still looks like there's a lot of mess to come, unfortunately. And so why is it that the UK and other areas oh, close to it pop back out into my, uh, my, my, my graphics are, are not suffering in the way that places further south are? So basically, we are on the favourable side, if you like, of the area of high pressure. So we still have Atlantic air feeding around that high mostly mm -hmm. to us. We had a little bit of Arctic air the last few days. It's been a bit fresher. Now we're just about to tip back in to a northwesterly. So we are essentially, at the moment, protected by the mm -hmm. influence of the Atlantic, which keeps our winters relatively mild. It's when we move into a kind of more eastern regime, the beast from the east, that we actually get the properly cold weather. Everyone thinks, oh, Arctic air is the properly cold weather. This time of year, it's the Siberian weather that's come across from Russia and across Europe that gives us the properly biting cold, and we don't have that yet. But... I don't know if you've spoken to any of my colleagues in the last few days. Something called sudden stratospheric warming is showing signals. That's what was tied into the beast from the east last year. Mm -hmm. The signal for that is positive. Mm -hmm. um, some part of Europe is going to have a very cold spell through the latter part of January into February. Whether it will come our way, stay with us. We will, of course. Now